Good morning, church. Passage reading this morning is from Mark chapter 12, 28 to 34. I'll be reading from the NIV version. The Greatest Commandment One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus has given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but Him. To love Him with all your heart with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. Thank you, God, that we are able to come to worship together even during this lockdown. We can worship God anytime, anywhere, and in any circumstances. Even this lockdown, we can come and worship together even though we may not be physically physically together, we are one in spirit. We are a body of Christ. What makes a church is not the building that we see, but the people that makes up the church. It is a privilege to be a member of Gateway and to be part of this body of Christ, where people support each other and encourage one another, especially the way that you welcome visitors and make them love. It is great. As in John 13, 34 to 35, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. Well done. Today I'm talking about how we can do the right thing and yet still miss the mark. It's like the idiom that says, don't put the cart before the horse. Look for the best that God has for us and not just the good. I also like this slide, uh, which would probably make more sense uh, later on. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit come on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Hence, in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 12, the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pente Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seems to be tongues of fire separated and came to rest on each 
of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, the crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? How then? Then how is it that each of us hear them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Medes and Elamites, resident of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Perigia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We heard them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? And then Peter stood up and shared, The Messiah, according to scripture, will be hung on a tree, and on the third day, according to scripture, will be raised from the dead. And he shared, And this Messiah that you are waiting for is no other than Jesus Christ, whom you crucified. And in verse 37, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? The rest you can read for yourself. And now I want to move on to verse 42 onwards. The fellowship of the believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. They devoted themselves to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. They continued to meet together. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people, the best of God. They rejoiced in their newfound faith in Christ and they were excited and they came together to worship God. They had a revival. Whoever is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. So, what happened next? The best of, of God became the good. That is why revival never lasts. God comes and meet with His people. People get filled with the Holy Spirit. They have an encounter with God in a mighty way. They experience something very, very special. And then 
God moved on. But we, experiencing this wonderful uh, thing that happened, we would like to perpetuate this wonderful feeling, this wonderful encounter. But God has moved on. But we want to relive it. Fellowship with God became fellowship with each other. What do I mean? Let me give you some example from my life experience. When I came to England to study, uh, it was quite frightening because it, might, it was my first time away from home, traveling all by myself. It was quite sc scary. I came to Birmingham, did my studies, and I found a fellowship, the Birmingham Chinese Christian Fellowship. It was a wonderful fellowship because it comprises of students, students from Hong Kong, students from Malaysia. It was like a family, something familiar. It's like the saying, the birds of the feather flocks together. And we enjoy great fellowship, worshipping God, and we share stories. Stories like, you know lah, when I first came to uh, England, I was, was in the tube station and I tried to find where Leicester Square is, how to get to Leicester Square. And I keep asking people and people say, don't know. Finally, I managed to get this... Uh, person. He must be an accountant. He was in a striped suit, very smart. And I say, sir, can you please help me? Where is this Leicester Square? Say, he then he was thinking, Leicester Square, there's no such station. But I said, look, there is, look, it says here on the map, Leicester Square. And then he burst into laughing. He said, Okay, it's spelled Leicester, but we pronounce it Leicester Square. Yeah, you go figure. What, man? So, so we, we enjoy uh, sharing jokes together and our, our uh, adventure in England. And as you know, as Asian, um, our relationship center around food. In fact, Malaysians are very light eaters. As soon as the sun come up, la, we eat. Such was BCCF. It was a great time where I grew. And in some ways, it was also a distraction. <laughs> Especially when Emily came along. That gorgeous lovely girl that come, somehow caught my eye and boy life become, became complicated was I coming to church to worship God or was it it's a bit complicated so a good things can be a distraction because there were times when Jesus came and said to me, Bo Kong, come, sit with me and spend time with me. And off I go to the BCCF and we have great fellowship, we have great singing and great worship, worshipping God. Bo Kong, come, sit with me, fellowship with me. And here I was in BCCF, worshipping Fellowshiping with God's people. Sometimes we feel like staying when God say go. And there are times we feel like eating because we're hungry. And God say fast. There are times when we are sleepy, ready for bed. 
and God say, pray. I stayed in England, got my degree, and I was in England for 23 years. Married Emily, had our first child, Joseph, got a home, and making a life for ourselves. And then Emily heard from God and said, time to go home. And she shared with me, what is God saying to you? And I begin to weigh things up. Part of the reason I came to England to study was because I failed the LCE and and without LCE, without Malay, it would be difficult uh, to work in Malaysia. And I've been here in England for 23 years. It would be better to stay than to go back. But we both heard from the Lord and, we com and God confirmed with us that it was the right thing to do. So we sold our house, packed our bags and went home. And eventually I managed to find a job with National Semiconductor, NS. And fortunately it was an American company. And the office, we spoke in English, but the problem was the production floor. For the most of the operators, the majority, majority of them spoke Malay. It was like an itik and an ayam, a duck and a chicken. The operator could not understand my English and I could not understand the operator of their Malay. Like itik and ayam, chicken and a duck communicating. And sometimes we joke, Emily joke with me, you know, ah yeah, you, you don't know what's happening. Simply nodding her head saying yes. For all you know, she might have, she could have proposed to you and you nod your head and say yes. <laughs> it was great, quite a, a joke uh, with us. The best, not just the good. You see, Jesus took time off, went into a remote pl place, and pray. He spent time with his father. He communed with his father. The next day he comes down and begin to preach and begin to perform miracles and signs and wonder. And the people were wondering, wow, who is this that can do all these things? And actually Jesus was puzzled because why are you so so amazed. All I'm doing is just doing what I see my father is doing. You see, Jesus spent his time alone with God, receiving strength, receiving from his father, communicating, communicating with him, having a personal relationship with him. And when the time was right, he came and ministered, not the other way around. So, coming back to Acts, the best became the good. What happened next? In Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to 7, the choosing of the seven. <clears throat> In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing. The Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebrew Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It will not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. 
Brothers and sisters, choose seven men among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to, to them and give and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nacono, Timon, Permanas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostle who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to faith. Oh, look, your portion is bigger than mine. No, it's the same. No, yours is bigger. Stephanie is bigger. Look, it's not fair. His portion is bigger. No, it's the same. No, it's bigger. Oh, it's bigger, is it? Oh, you want it? Ah, have it. What used to be the fellowship with God became fellowship with others. Let's go back to uh, Acts chapter 2, where it first began. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possession to give to anyone who had need. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts. They had an encounter with the Holy Spirit and they were filled with joy and they came together to worship God. That was the focus. And now, in Acts chapter 6, yes, God was there. They had prayer meetings. They had worship. But somehow I guess that Jesus, that God was not really first on their agenda. See, in Acts chapter 2, in the beginning, the move of the Holy Spirit moved in a mighty way and the people came together and led by the Holy Spirit, they worshipped God. It was a Holy Spirit-led meeting. Now in Acts chapter 6, the church began to develop and instead of Holy Spirit-led meetings, they developed the first committee, the first committee to sort out the logistical order of things. Spending time with God and reading His Word is the best. Just like Jesus did, He spent a lot of time alone with the Father. And when the time was right, He did His ministry not the other way around. Good environment is helpful, but be careful it does not rob you from the best. God is the only one who can fully fill your heart, fully satisfy you. People cannot fully satisfy. They may fail you, but God, will never fail you because He knows you. He knows what you're thinking. He's, he knows what is in your heart. Only God can fully satisf satisfy. We are made in the image of God. And because we are made in the image of God, for His purpose, we have this inbuilt desire to worship. We can worship God or we can worship things. We can worship our cars or our homes or our jobs. 
we have a tendency because we are built in the image of God and made for God we have a tendency to worship and the chances is that we worship things rather than God just like the hymn puts it softly and tenderly Jesus is calling calling for you and for me patiently Jesus is waiting and watching watching for you and for me come home come home ye who are weary come home earnestly tenderly Jesus is calling calling O sinner come home church settle for God's best not just the good the church is a platform to help us to grow and mature in God to help us to develop a personal relationship with God gateway has many resources like essence encounter life groups pastors and vision team and other ministry but they're all there to help us to develop this wonderful relationship we can have with God an intimate relationship with God time alone with God build yourself up in the secret place alone with your mighty Savior so that you are able to stand whatever the circumstances so you will not falter if someone step on your foot or the pastor did not smile or shake your hands or an argument with someone will you fall away because something happened or will you remain faithful your life built on the foundation of God secure built on the cross of Jesus in Christ alone I stand is your foundation strong to weather the storm what is your foundation made of let's look at Paul and Barnabas in Acts chapter 15 36 to 41 this agreement between Paul and Barnabas sometime later Paul said to Barnabas let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing Barnabas wanted to take John also call Mark with them but Paul did not think it was wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work they had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus Paul chose Silas and went commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord he went through Syria Syria and Cilicia strengthening the churches they had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company but in fact Paul and Barnabas were buddies they were good friends in fact it was Barnabas that brought Paul to the Apostle and the believers and told them there's nothing to fear about Paul because before Paul became a convert he persecuted the church he put Christians into prison and even had some of them executed so the Apostle and the believers have every right to be frightened of him he was quite high up he had quite an authority and he persecuted the church and put them into prison 
and some being executed. So they were frightened. But Barnabas was the one that brought Paul to the disciples, uh, to the apostles and to the believers and said, it's okay, nothing to fear. So Paul and Barnabas were best friends. They worked together in missions and spread the gospel. But now they had such a, a sharp disagreement. They parted company. But they did not part from their faith because their lives were centered on God in Christ Jesus. Their foundation was based on Christ Jesus. So even though they did not agree and they had to part company, they did not part their faith because their faith was based on the correct foundation on Christ Jesus and not on man. And you even hear of stories of church members giving up Christianity just because they cannot agree on the color of the carpet in the church hall. Finally, church, make sure you have a good foundation. Listen to Jesus' instruction and build your house on the rock. The, and that rock is Jesus Christ. And everyone who hears the word of Jesus, who read the word of God and put them into practice, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Is your foundation strong enough to weather the storm? Or will you leave Christianity because something bad happened? Pursue God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. Thank you for listening. To sum up my sermon, it's about the presence of God in our lives. We can have a personal relationship with Him. That is more important, a personal relationship with your Saviour. He is our rock and foundation of our life. In Him we can stand firm, no matter what the circumstances may be. Things may fall apart, but if we have the right foundation and we believe in God, we can stand and weather the storm, whatever it may be, because God will never leave us. He is faithful and able to help us through. His grace is sufficient for us. If you are listening today and have not yet known Jesus as your Lord and Saviour and would like to invite Him into your life, you can join me in this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for me. I believe that you died for my sin and rose from the dead. I turn from my sin and come and invite you to come into my heart. And my life. I thank you Lord Jesus for listening and for coming 
into my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. And if you make this prayer with me, remember, God hears, He is faithful, He will come and meet with you. And in the meantime, I will encourage you to find a church or a fellowship where you can grow and mature in Christ Jesus. I wish you all the best in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen.